Uh, I'm delighted to be here today and to discuss about uh, the uh, article that will be appearing in the upcoming issue, the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So uh, in this uh, uh, very uh, broad, comprehensive review of the literature entitled uh, Obesity and Heart Failure, Focus on the Obesity Paradox, uh, that I wrote together with uh, Dr. Uh, Chip Lavi from the uh, John Hoshner uh, Heart and Vascular Institute, and Dr. Ross Serena, from, which is a, a professor of physical therapy at the University of Illinois in Chicago. We wanted to uh, emphasize the role of, and describe more in details, the role of uh, uh, obesity in heart failure. Uh, there is, in fact, a, a, controversial, a controversial role of obesity in heart failure. On the one hand, obesity seems to be uh, a risk factor, an independent risk factor for the development of heart failure. On the other hand, when patients have obesity and heart failure at the same time, concomitantly, uh, obesity seems to exert some protective effects. And more specifically, we looked at the importance of the role of body composition in uh, uh, the development and uh, the development of heart failure and how body composition compartments, more specifically fat mass, fat-free mass, and lean mass, uh, might actually uh, play a protective role once heart failure is diagnosed. In a brief summary, what we found is that the lean mass seems to be really, really important to play a major role in both the development but also in the potential protective role of obesity in heart failure. In heart failure. Uh, more specifically, there are some uh, uh, hemodynamic and structural changes of the heart uh, of our patients that might be due to obesity and specifically to uh, increased amount of lean mass. Um, uh, but also some negative effects of adipose, some other negative effects of adipose tissue that is able to produce uh, an, uh, a certain amount of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines, also named adipokines, with uh, uh, direct cardiodepressant properties. In reality, the World Health Organization defines obesity as an excess body fat that impairs health. I think it's uh, really important to highlight the importance of assessing body composition to determine if there is an excess of body fat. Uh, once our failure is actually diagnosed, lean mass might exert protective effects. And uh, how is that even possible? We th think that lean mass is a major determinant of cardiorespiratory fitness in patients with heart failure, and cardiorespiratory fitness is a, an important predictor of mortality in this population. And uh, the higher amount of lean mass has been associated with better uh, cardiorespiratory fitness, so the idea is that the higher is the amount of lean mass, uh, the better will be their cardiorespiratory fitness. What we believe and we advocate for is for an, an assessment of body composition in our patients, not just to determine the uh, amount of fat mass the patient have to determine whether they're obese or not, but to determine whether they also have a, a reduced amount of lean mass. Uh, and if there is a reduced amount of lean mass, these patients will be classified as sarcopenic, whether if they have a, a reduced amount of lean mass in association with an excess body fat, at that point we will be talking about a condition called sarcopenic obesity, which has been uh, uh, associated with worse outcomes in a number of chronic disease and recently also in, uh, uh, in heart failure. We then discuss the role of uh, a diet in uh, uh, the development and progression of heart failure. We think that if you eat a healthier diet with a lower amount of sugar and saturated fat, they might be uh, uh, having some beneficial effects by reducing the amount of uh, systemic uh, low-grade inflammation. Our body, when we measure our body weight, mm -hmm. we only have a, a rough estimate of the quality of our, uh, of our weight. Mm -hmm. To really determine whether somebody is obese or is not obese, we really need to measure uh, body composition. Mm -hmm. If you have an athlete, uh, especially if, uh, like, for instance, rugby players, you know, their, their BMI might be 35, 40. We have some, sometimes we had an athletes in the past that had BMI higher than 45. They would classify them as a very obese, severely obese. In reality, you go to measure the body composition, and the amount of lean mass or muscle mass is so high that you would never define them as uh, obese subjects. That's why the body composition assessment is, uh, it becomes extremely important. On the other hand, you might have a subject with a BMI of 23, which might be considered a normal uh, body weight for, you know, in, in, uh, in relation to their height, but this pa some patients might not be very fit, and so might, they might have a lot of fat mass compared to their lean mass. And in that case, they would be still considered uh, 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 not a very good body composition uh, uh, status. Well, the takeaway message, I think, uh, is that the treatment of a heart failure it's, uh, it cannot just be uh, one, and we think that the assessment of body composition for a better nutritional status certification is essential, as well as uh, um, some non-pharmacologic therapies such as exercise training, uh, and more specifically uh, resistance training, 
to trying to increase the lean mass and the mus muscular mass in, uh, in our patients as well as a low saturated fat uh, low saturated fat and low sugar diet and to do so I think that the multidisciplinary approach plays a major role in which uh, physicians nutritionists exercise physiologists and pharmacists they have to work together Con one of them it's not enough we hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings valuable our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.